Well, there's a new Lion King movie coming out, so what better opportunity to take a look back at the other Lion King movies that followed in the wake of the original, starting with The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Is this sequel as good as the 1994 classic? Well, no, it isn't, but as far as unnecessary sequels to timeless classics go, this is far from the worst one that I've ever seen. In fact, out of all the direct-to-video Disney sequels that I have seen, I'd say that The Lion King 2 is probably the best one. Unlike with some of the others, you can tell that there was an actual idea behind this movie. While the first Lion King was a loose adaptation of William Shakespeare's Hamlet, the story of a young prince whose father is murdered by his ambitious uncle, The Lion King 2 is in turn a loose adaptation of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, the story of a couple of star-crossed lovers, each of whom comes from a family who is prejudiced against the other. Gee, Disney sure seemed to have a thing for Shakespeare in the 90s. Some new writer named Shakespeare. Uh-huh. Ever read it? No. So yeah, like I said, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet for kids, where their forbidden love ends up conquering all instead of getting the leads both killed, and the Montagues were just evil, and Mercutio was played by Andy Dick. Hey, it's every lion for himself out here. That little termite's gotta learn to be on Ugh. Being based on Romeo and Juliet, appropriately, Simba's pride has two main characters, neither of whom is Simba. The first is Simba's daughter, Kiara, and the second is Kovu, the son of Scar's never before mentioned mate Zira, who along with Scar's other lioness supporters, who we never saw or heard of back in the original film, have been banished from the Pride Lands by Simba. These lands belong to Scar. I banished you from the Pride Lands. Get out. However, despite being the son of Scar's mate, Kovu isn't actually Scar's son. The movie is very clear on that point. He was hand-chosen by Scar to follow in his paw prints. Scar wasn't even his father. He was wasn't my father. Kovu was the last born before you exiled us to the Outlands. He just took him in. Even though Kovu looks like Scar, was apparently chosen by Scar to succeed him, and as I said, his mother is Scar's mate. What is your destiny? I will avenge Scar. Totally not Scar's son, though, since, you know, Scar was Simba's uncle and Kiara is Simba's daughter, and it wouldn't do at all to have Kiara fall in love with her cousin once removed, even though Simba and Nala are almost certainly half-siblings. Anyway, the point is that you've got the child of Simba getting together with who is, symbolically anyway, the child of his greatest enemy, Scar. And Simba is not cool with that at all. Kovu is one of them. Scar's heir. How can I accept him? Judge me now for who I am. Or am I to be blamed for a crime I didn't commit? This film actually reveals Simba to be kind of a helicopter parent in general, having apparently taken the lesson that his father was trying to teach him about not looking for trouble to mean that he should never let his daughter do anything for herself ever, sending Timon and Pumbaa to keep an eye on her wherever she goes. However, I don't really blame him for it. She's just like you were when you were young. Exactly. Do you realize the dangers we put ourselves in? Ugh. You mean the dangers you put us in? This behavior from Simba makes perfect sense given his misadventures and tragedies back in the first film, from which he clearly has at least some lingering PTSD. Scar. <laughs> Kovu? His overbearing nature understandably grates on Kiara, who at first really just wants to prove herself in some nebulous way, similarly to how Simba did in the original, but then later on, along with Kovu, strives to reunite the disparate prides. Speaking of which, despite their very existence not quite gelling 100% with the events of the original movie, I quite like the portrayal of Kovu and his mother Zira. Zira may at first seem to be just a gender-swapped scar out for vengeance, but the movie actually gives her quite a lot more character depth than Scar had, and that she really seems to genuinely care about her children. Think Cersei Lannister, only a lion. I mean, you know, a, a real lion. Shut up. Kovu also works well as an inverse of Simba from the original Lion King. While Simba was born for the purpose of succeeding Mufasa as the king, then turns away from his path and has to be set back on the right course, Kovu has been born for the purpose of succeeding Scar as king, but turns away from the path when he learns that his not-dad was actually a pretty shitty guy. I've 
never heard the story of Scar that way. And chooses instead to live peacefully, inadvertently becoming the king's successor anyway as the mate of his daughter. This film being about the next generation of lions works well thematically with the first film, which is all about the circle of life, and we get a few nods to the original with similar scenes and sequences. I'm telling you, buddy, it's gonna be like old times. You, me, and the little guy. It is a girl. Girl! Girl! Oh like the original, this film is, of course, a musical, and the songs are... okay. The best one of the bunch is the opening song, He Lives in You, which was actually reused from the Lion King Broadway show, something I didn't realize until I first saw the show a couple of weeks ago. The rest of the songs are fine, certainly, but nowhere near as good as those from the original, which has one of the best soundtracks in any film full stop. The same goes for the Lion King 2's animation, it's perfectly fine, and again, fares much better than either of the Aladdin sequels, though there is a moment or two where it shows its budget. Not that that's really a knock against it, though. Again, the original Lion King is one of the most gorgeously animated films of all time, and this is a direct-to-video sequel. Overall, I quite like The Lion King 2. I remembered this film being one of the better Disney sequels from my youth, and re-watching it, it didn't disappoint. If you've never seen it, or if it's been a while, give it a watch next time you revisit the original. I'd say it's worth it. I guess while we're here, I should also talk about the third movie, The Lion King 1 and a Half, which I actually just saw for the first time in preparation for this video. This isn't so much a film as it is an extended sketch comedy gag, whereby we learn that Timon and Pumbaa, who only entered the original film in its second act, were in fact present throughout most of the previous events, just off screen. What's that he's holding up? Ah, who cares, it's not important. The movie includes a lot of alternate perspectives to scenes from the original that show what Timon and Pumbaa were up to, and helps to connect the dots on a few occasions, such as including a couple of scenes that take place during the time skip in Hakuna Matata. The film's protagonist is Timon, who gets his own brief origin story and a couple of family members in bit parts, including his mother played by Julie Kavner. Everything the light touches belongs to someone else. This all does more to flesh him out, and honestly makes him a more sympathetic character than he ever was in the original movie, where he really isn't ever portrayed as much more than an opportunistic jerk. Ah, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Albeit one who's primarily used for comic relief, so it doesn't really matter that he's a jerk, but hey, it's nice to flesh out his character a bit, I suppose. Thanks. I'm glad we had this talk. The Lion King 1.5 doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for me as a film in its own right, but as a companion piece slash riff on the original, there is a lot of fun to be had here. The movie also gets points for creativity. I appreciate that it's going for more of a side story than a sequel. Let's go, Pumba. I think the storm's coming to a head. It's all very silly and doesn't make much logistical sense. Like, for example, Timon and Pumba at one point go to sleep at the end of the Circle of Life song in the original where Simba has just been born, but are woken up the next morning to the sounds of I just can't wait to be king, being sung by Simba now in the prime of his youth. Like I said, it's all nonsense, but it's mostly fun nonsense. I particularly like this gag where it turns out that Timon and Pumbaa were responsible for knocking over the giant pyramid of animals at the end of that song. I could have done, however, without the framing narrative of these two watching the movie alongside the audience in silhouette, pausing at times to add their own commentary. I've got the remote! But everyone's gonna get confused! On top of this gimmick being used far Far too often throughout the film, this is also totally universe-breaking. It's extremely bizarre seeing Lion King characters do things like watching TV, using a remote to pause, fast-forward, rewind, etc. Hey, what's, what's going on? Every Pumba, magazine. you're sitting on the remote! Huh? Oh, oh sorry. Strap. I thought it was a drown. And then at the end, being joined by various other Disney characters who all show up to watch the movie again. It's just a little bit too meta, and while I was pretty down in general with the looser, more irrelevant reverent tone of the movie compared to its predecessors, these parts pushed it just a little bit too far for my liking. Still though, it's hard to deny that out of the many other Disney films that got cash grab direct-to-video sequels, these are collectively among the better ones. Oh good, they're talking things out, which is how it should be. Sure, there was also a Timon and Pumbaa spin-off TV show that I remember not liking all that much even as a kid. And then of course there's whatever the f*** this is supposed to be, but in terms of the two actual films, yeah, The Lion King got it better than most. Now, like it or not, the only thing that remains to be seen is whether or not the quote-unquote times infinity live-action remake coming out next week will be able to say the same.
Come on back next time for the review, and if you like this video, help me out by hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, and ringing the bell to stay up to date on my latest stuff. Leave a comment down below letting me know any of your thoughts on the Lion King sequels or any of the other Disney sequels, and check out some of this other great stuff I've got up on my channel. As always, thanks so much to all of you guys for watching, and take care.